congratulations are in order as President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa was re-elected for a second term over the weekend. Lawmakers voted overwhelmingly on Friday to put Ramaphosa back in office for another five years after the May 29 general election produced no outright winner. Meanwhile, Zuma and the MK party plan to contest the election results in court. And some people who don't know politics just think <laughs> saying phrases and, and things. <laughs> when this time they were faced with a problem of how do you deal with the situation in South Africa, they decide to put our country as if it's at war. <laughs> we now need to be together so that we can have. We will therefore at the right time call on our people to demonstrate their dissatisfaction against all these injustice, injustices peacefully, in the streets, in the courts, and even in parliament until our grievances have been addressed. <laughs> we have now launched a new electoral court challenge and given that court the evidence we have collected. We shall also participate in the case lodged by the ATM in the Electoral Court. We shall leave no stone unturned. <laughs> Regarding the current political situation, we need to educate our people that there is no government. We need to educate our people that there is no government of national unity in South Africa. And joining us now is the director of the Center of Security, Peace and Conflict Resolution at the Nelson Mandela University in Sekilelo Breakfast. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, sir. All right. There have been mixed reactions since the elections and, of course, you know, the, uh, the decision to form a coalition party and all those other mm -hmm. developments that have happened since then. Um, but, you know, talk to us about the decision to go to court or to challenge the election results by Jacob Zuma and his party. Well, I mean, in the build-up to the elections, um, um controversy is where after it broke out of the ANC, um, they predicted that it was going to get uh, two-thirds of a majority, but things did not go according to plan. And they think that they were cheated on. For instance, in a case at N, which is KwaZulu Natal, that's uh, their strongest uh, base. Um, they got 45%. They believe that they should have gotten a 58%. Um, so because of the popularity of uh, Jacob Zuma, they think that there is no way um, they can be in number three in terms of the line up of the prominent political parties, which is the ANC, the DA, and also uh, themselves uh, in control of So they've uh, tried last week uh, on Friday, there was a meeting, as you know, of the National Assembly that elected the president of the country. But as a precursor of that, they instituted an application trying to put that meeting on hold. Uh, but then they fell short because that application was struck off the roll. If you had listened to that uh, press uh, conference of Jacob Zuma yesterday, um, you would have heard that uh, they want to institute another application to the International Court of uh, Justice because they think that the judicial system in South Africa has let them down or it is uh, biased. All right. Um, since you made reference to the press conference with uh, Jacob Zuma yesterday, uh, when we were listening to it, we did see where the spokesperson for the MK party was saying that we need to educate our people on the fact that there is no national unity. And, you know, that's something that the current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, has pushed for. He said there's no coalition government, that it's national, a government of national unity. How do you see this playing out? How do you see, first of all, talk to us about the need for a strong opposition. The EFF has been a strong opposition, opposition mm -hmm. for years before the MK you know, came on, on, on the scene. So talk to us about the need for strong opposition, opposition in uh, South Africa's politics or democracy and how much influence the opposition wields in South Africa. Okay, you are raising two strategic issues. The first issue that you've raised is the issue of a coalition arrangement. Um, so the current arrangement that we have, the question is, is it a government of national unity or is it a coalition arrangement? 
Um, it's a bit of both because the the concept of coalition arrangement was foregrounded by Arad Limfant of Holland. And coalition formations have different versions. Uh, I think we need to, to debunk the myth that there's only one monolithic model of coalition arrangement. So the government of national unity is a coalition arrangement because it is based on power sharing. The electorate have rearranged their social contract. So the ANC is in a coalition arrangement with the range of political parties. So that's the first point. The second point is about the role of opposition parties. We have separation of powers in this country, meaning that we have the lawmaking body, which is the legislative um, institution, which also holds the executive institution, which is the cabinet accountable, and it does that through uh, committees. Then we have the judicial system, which is uh, responsible for the interpretation of, of the law. So all in all, what I'm saying is that the role of opposition parties is to hold the government of the day accountable and to make sure that uh, members of the executive institution, they appear before parliament. You must also remember that one of the issues that was raised by the Zondo Commission was the failure of parliament in the past to hold the executive institution. That's why, for instance, under the circumstances of the administration of Zuma, corruption flourished because the ANC at that time had a majority and it was able to bulldoze uh, processes of the legislative um, institution. So yeah. breakfast, if you say that is a mix of both, that is a mix of a coalition government as well as national unity, how does this play out? Yes, for the first time we're seeing that uh, DEA, um, IFP uh, and the ANC all voted an ANC president for the first time, but... If you say that this is a mix of both, do you foresee that there might be challenges, not with, of course, the election of the president, but with governance going forward? Because some analysts would argue that the real problem starts from you know, what governance will look like, because he would always have to consult with all the other parties, and they all have to be on board. So there are two things that uh, give rise to coalition formations. The first one is lack of majoritarianism. The second one is a political environment that is uh, fragmented. So when it comes to politics of accommodation, which is a uh, coalition formations, there are strong points and weaknesses. One of the strong points of coalition formations is that no political party is able to do as it pleases, meaning that no political party can impose its hegemony on all and sundry. It has to have a buy-in from other political parties. Uh, but the this and, and 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 before I move to the next point, consulting with other political parties is a good thing because it deepens uh, democracy. Also, it takes into account the views of other uh, political parties. But the worst part of it is that if you have a budget, for instance, you are likely not to pass it uh, in the beginning because any government plan is aligned to budget. And that becomes a bone of uh, contention. As you might know, um, from 2016 until today, we've had a plethora of coalition arrangements in this country at local government level. And they have been unworkable and unstable because the polar elite have a tendency to rush into joining forces without developing a conflict management mechanism to deal with their internal contradiction. But thank goodness, at the moment, there is a framework that guides these political elites, even though it uh, omitted to include the public. So meaning that if there are disagreements, government's not going to collapse, but they will go to um, a forum where they will iron out their differences, which is a, a good thing. Yeah. All right. I, um, two things I want to ask, you know, just for clarity, uh, because I think I may have missed it. You know, how relevant is the MK with the uh, coalition government or the uh, government of national unity uh, must they be involved yeah. that's one and then two um former president um jacob zuma saying that the anc must be treated as the problem and not as part of the solution so rather they should be treated as part of the problems not you know as a solution you know does anybody see that as hypocritical you know since he was with the anc Yes, Mshorozi, which is Zuma, is applying double standards because he was a president of the ANC. And remember, there was a, a faction that sympathized with Thabo Mbeki 
after yeah. he was uh, recalled as the president of the country, that broke away and established a political party called COPE, which is the Congress of the People. Jacob Zuma took a swipe at them and questioned why they jumped sheep. He attacked them for leaving the ANC, you know, but now when it suits him, he, he, he's attacking the ANC. So you can see that double standards. Um, now, he's very popular, unfortunately, and he is the embodiment of Umkonto Wesizu. That's why before the elections, they wanted to make sure that he becomes um, a, an image of the party and appears on the ballot paper. And that happened. That's why they got a lot of votes. Um, so they do pose a serious threat to this current um, arrangement, which is this uh, uh, coalition. And Jacob Zuma is loved by people. He's a very down-to-earth person. I mean, it has happened also even in other post-colonial states, maybe even uh, in uh, uh, Nigeria, whereby leaders use their personalities to hold on to power uh, uh, a bit longer. Even the things that he believes in, he believes in what he, he calls radical economic uh, transformation, which is uh, entrenching black people in the commanding heights of the um, economy, and he believes in the return of the stolen land. But those things, he spoke about them when his power was threatened by opposition parties, when he was accused of the upgrades um, at Inkantla, which is uh, his place. So his politics have never been genuine. They've always been about himself. Okay, um, I want us to talk about the influence of the ANC as we wrap up as quickly as you can. How much influence do they currently wield? I mean, yes, the elections have shown that maybe not as much, but would you say that the people in South Africa may be, again, starting to trust the ANC with this new arrangement? Would you say that they are excited by it? I, I saw the uh, Cyril Ramaphosa addressing the National Assembly, and the National Assembly did seem very warm and excited about it. But are the people in South Africa generally excited about this new arrangement, and do they have uh, a rekindled trust in the ANC? One party dominance is a thing of the past, and the hegemon of the ANC has been dealt with the blow in a big way. The ANC has had an electoral uh, trajectory that is downward. Um, that's why, for instance, they did not get 50% plus one for the first time since 1994. So the political longevity or the political lifespan of liberation movements in post-colonial states tends to be affected by institutionalization of a uh, uh, corruption. So normally when turnout is low, as it has been, our turnout in the recent election stood at 58%, which was the lowest since the dawn of a, a democracy. Normally that benefits opposition parties as opposed to the ANC. So the arrogance of power of the ANC to do as it pleases has caught up with them in a big way. Uh, and, and I see that there is a sense of humility among some uh, political elites of the ANC. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll see how things turn out in the um, um, days um, going forward, maybe weeks. And, um, of course, we wish South Africa the very best because these decisions basically would tell what direction the country goes. I know that uh, President uh, Ramaphosa has a lot of decisions to make with regards to his international policies also and his alignment. And I don't know how South Africans are also leaning um, or you know, feeling about you know what has happened in the last couple of months, but thank you very much. Uh, breakfast in see Kilelo for joining us, and we'll look forward to speaking with you again. Mm -hmm.